Volcanoes. Whoa, they're pretty damn impressive, right? Anything that smoked for a while before exploding in a hellfire of molten magma and ash, raining down devastation in its surrounding environment and causing all manner of problems for us humans should certainly draw our attention as a civilization. But what about when that very same destructive event occurs deep beneath the bottom of the ocean bed? Wait, what? Underwater volcanoes? Yeah, exactly. Let's see what they're all about. Hello internet, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, life's biggest questions. As per usual, I'll be your disembodied and flowing voice, Jack Finch, as today we curiously ask the question, what happens if an underwater volcano explodes? Roll clip. <laughs> All right, guys, yeah, don't worry. It wouldn't ever become so bad that Los Angeles sank into the Pacific Ocean. But for the curious amongst you, that clip was from 2009's disaster movie to end all disaster movies, 2012. And yeah, look how that went down, right? The thing is though, if you didn't already know, volcanoes erupt underwater all the damn time, as we will explain further on in this video. But if you actually reverse that clip, it might give you a little bit more of an idea as to the potential destructive creation, shall we say, that can occur when magma meets water. It's food for thought, but for us to first begin to answer this question, we'll have to outline the exact mechanics of what an underwater volcano is. In fact, despite the renowned volcanoes that scatter the planet, Krakatoa, Vesuvius, and the the Icelandic one that I won't even attempt to pronounce, the overwhelming majority of the Earth's volcanoes reside at the bottom of the ocean. As far as we can discern, most of the planet's volcanic action happens at an average of 8,500 feet beneath the water. That's deep, really, really deep, and it's thought that down there at the bottom, beneath all of that staggering depth, there are an estimated 1 million active volcanoes. Uh, that seems like a lot, doesn't it? According to Oregon State University, there are an estimated 4,000 volcanoes per million square kilometers across the floor of the Pacific Ocean, which vaguely lets us hazard a guess at the million magma spewing soft spots at the bottom of the deep blue sea. And it's thought that as many as 75,000 of those volcanoes rise over half a mile above the ocean floor. Holy mackerel. That's huge. And not only that, the vast majority of them are indeed hydrothermally active and happily do their thing on an active basis. So who knows how many of them are spewing molten magma into the ocean right now as we speak. The thing is though, whilst this number seems huge, and I mean it is, the definition of the term volcano is as important as the definition of what makes an active volcano, submarine or otherwise. Under the ocean, usage of the term volcano can be applied to several different definitions, mainly being individual vents, volcanic edifices, or even entire volcanic fields. Out of all of the magma bubbling its way beneath the Earth's crust, it is thought that roughly 75% of the planet's lava that reaches the surface does so completely unnoticed at specific submarine mid-ocean ridges. And you see, that's where the interesting stuff happens. All volcanoes on the planet occur along the boundaries of the Earth's tectonic plates. And although the numerous submarine volcanoes don't exactly produce the cataclysmic and spectacular eruption events as their on-land brethren, undersea volcanic activity is a constant process that shapes the very features of the ocean floor. Above the ocean, the most numerous of all of these is an area of the Pacific known as the Ring of Fire, a major volcanic area in the basin of the Pacific that contains 452 dormant and active volcanoes. So as you can imagine, the fact that beneath the ocean depths there's considered to be roughly a million of these things, you can see just exactly the staggering extent of the ocean. You see, when these things blow and magma reaches the level of the seafloor, it meets the cold ocean water. And in that moment of primal collision where water meets fire, the magma quickly cools to form basaltic rock which is often nicknamed pillow lava due to its rounded shape. And if you ever wonder what the ocean bed is made from, it's primarily that, pillow lava. I mean, amongst many other things, but hey, the ocean's complicated. And in all reality, that's kind of all there is to it, really. Although our current understanding seemingly has much more to learn about underwater volcanoes, their primary function is exactly the same as they are above water. Their tectonic pressure forces forward magma from the Earth's liquid core. It erupts, reacts with water, and then forms rock. However, that's not exactly all there is to it, because the real interesting thing is just exactly what that rock can become. Because what can start as a tiny little underwater lava spout could one day become an entire country. Yeah, 
You heard me. Take Iceland, the tiny island nation with a population of just over 338,000 people. They gave the world Bjork, Sigur Ross and Lazy Town and all around they're pretty decent guys and their entire country wouldn't have existed without underwater volcanic activity. You see, Iceland sits smack dab on the front lines of the eternal battle that rages between two key pieces of the Earth's crust, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, a seam in the Earth's surface deep beneath the North Atlantic Ocean where both the Eurasian and North American plates slide apart. Deep beneath that ridge lies an eternally roiling and boiling pot of magma which comprises the very building blocks that created Iceland. A pocket of magma that sits deep beneath Iceland is thought to be what created the island as hot lava rose to the surface of the ocean where it then cooled and gradually accumulated into the island that we know today roughly around 70 million years ago. And it's not just Iceland that has the power of underwater volcanic activity to thank for its creation but the Hawaiian Islands, the Azores Island, the Galapagos, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea and even the Philippines. In fact it's even considered that New Zealand was formed by the eruption of ancient volcanoes. And that's not even the end of it because as a matter of fact new islands are being created by underwater volcanic activity all the time. Surtsey, Nishinoshima, Kavachi, brand new swathes of land that are newly emerging from the ocean down to the wondrous power of volcanic activity. And so there we have it, our long and short answer to the question, what happens if an underwater volcano explodes? You get your own brand new private island. Well, I mean, you just got to get there first. Tough competition. Well, what do you guys think? Would you like nothing more than to witness an underwater volcano exploding and thus creating your own private island? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any intriguing insights of your own. Before we depart from today's video, let's first say a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. First up, Molly underscore music band says, Jack has the best voice. Ah. Thanks Molly underscore music band, that is very, very kind of you. Good luck with your Molly underscore music band. Matt Ludwig says, hey Jack, I want a shout out, please. Great job as always. Well, I mean, you did say please Matt, so sure thing buddy, good manners, they will get you absolutely everywhere. And finally, Jojo Lim says, sometimes I look at my dirty one year old toothbrush and wonder, Am I actually cleaning my teeth with the toothbrush or actually cleaning the toothbrush using my teeth? <sighs> Jojo, I think you should get a new toothbrush. Yeah. Thank you. Well, on that note, that's unfortunately all we've got time for in today's video. Cheers for sticking around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just life's biggest questions in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disembodied flight voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching life's biggest questions, and until next time, you take it easy.